Hi, this is Chris Lilly at Big Bob Gibson Barbecue in Decatur, Alabama. You are listening to the Firecast with Scott Roberts. Strap yourselves in. It's time for the Firecast. This is the podcast for all foodies who love food and is cooked over a fire or feels like fire in your mouth. If you love spice, smoke, sauce, and all things savory, this is the show for you. And now, here's your host, chili head and barbecue expert, Scott Roberts. And hello, fellow foodies, chili heads, hot sauce fanatics, barbecuers and grillers, or just merely the curious. Happy 2015. Now, as all of you are taking a break from riding your hoverboards, drinking your Pepsi Perfect, and eating your rehydrated Pizza Hut pizzas, I'm glad you're able to take a few minutes out of your busy schedule to take a listen to the latest installment of the Firecast. We have another slam dunk episode in store for you today. In the Fire Talkers segment, I am going to be speaking with Ed and Amy Buckholtz of Born to Hula Hot Sauces. And if you listen to the previous episode of the Firecast, I ordered the Reaper of Sorrow Hot Sauce, the best product of 2014. A Born to Hula is a company I've known about probably since about 2011. I first did a review on my blog, scottrobertsweb.com, on their four core sauces, which are their cayenne sauce, their habanero guajillo, their habanero ancho, and their ghost of ancho sauces. Now, one thing that I've always described about Ed Buckholz and Borna Hula is that they are not your way out of left field, really bizarre, oh, let's add all kinds of exotic ingredients like apricots and blueberries and absinthe, along with all the other kind of more traditional hot sauce ingredients. No, they are very, very basic. But what they are is a step above the competition. Uh, For instance, if you're a fan of your regular cayenne pepper, probably more Louisiana-style pepper hot sauces like Tabasco, Frank's, Texas Pete, well, try their cayenne sauce. It's very basic, straightforward, but it's just miles above those other widely known sauces. In terms of flavor, a much better thickness. It's not like pure water that you're drizzling all over your food. But they just take kind of traditional flavors of sauces. Some, like the aforementioned Louisiana-style hot sauce. The others, more Southwest-style hot sauces, like the habanero guajillo or the habanero ancho. And they just make things so much better. So anyway, right before the holidays, as a matter of fact, right after I had recorded my Best of 2014 episode, I talked to them via Skype, got to know about their history, the process behind all their products, and I told them for the very first time that their product, the Reaper of Sorrow, Carolina Reaper Hot Sauce, had won, had gotten my pick for Best Product of 2014, and they're very excited to hear that. So you can hear that interview later in this episode. And also, a very important segment, and Akin's Fiery World segment, my good friend and colleague and fellow chili head blogger Ken Alexander gives his picks for what he thought were the best products of 2014. Last year, we had kind of given our best of in the same episode. Well, this time out, I give him my picks for the best. In the last episode, now it's his turn. And Ken has some terrific judgment. I love his take on things. I value his opinion greatly. And you know what? You guys should too. Ken knows his products, so he goes through them one by one in his Ken's Fiery World segment. And yes, since it's a best of, I'm going to go ahead and again forego a review this time out. But don't you worry. I'm going to start with the reviews hot and heavy starting next episode. Uh, Before we get to the cooking tip of the week, there is a little bit of housekeeping I'd like to give you. One, all throughout the month of January 2015, I'm going to be having a super, a mega, an extra large chubby sized fiery foods and barbecue survey. Now, there are many reasons why I created this survey. Obviously, it's to find out more about all of you people, all of you listeners of the Firecast, all the followers of the blog, scottrobertsweb.com. But it was uh, probably last month that I realized I'd never done any type of formal survey. I don't know the demographics, statistics, based on what your interests are, cooking habits, what types of grills and smokers that you own, 
what type of flavor profiles you would like in your barbecue and your hot sauces, all that kind of stuff. Well, I finally created a survey, which you can take right now over at scottrobertsweb.com forward slash survey. Again, that is scottrobertsweb.com slash survey. It only take about five minutes of your time. There are four pages of the survey. I ask you all to please go over there, try it out, and it will help out tremendously. And any information will only be used for me. I'm not going to sell any information to any third parties, of course. There's no personal stuff you have to give. There's no name and address and email address and all that kind of stuff. Probably the most personal information is I just ask your age range, your gender, and things like that. That's just to kind of help better identify the audience for the Firecast and for my blog, scottrobertsweb.com. So again, that survey link is scottrobertsweb.com slash survey. And another little note, the Firecast has a brand new sponsor. It is Suckle Busters, Barbecue Rubs and Sauces based out of the great state of Texas. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Suckle Busters, they produce some fantastic products, mostly in a barbecue vein, and there are rubs and seasonings and sauces and stuff I keep stocked up in my kitchen all the time. Just some fantastic products, stuff that I reach for, I don't want to say every day, but when I want to get a good beef rub, a chicken rub, they have a dried jalapeno seasoning called Texas Gunpowder. It's just incredibly versatile, incredibly simple, but incredibly tasty as well. They have all kinds of award-winning sauces, glazes, and some fantastic products coming out in 2015. So I'm proud to bring Suckle Busters on board as a sponsor of the Firecast and ScottRobertsWeb.com. And if you want to find out more about Suckle Busters, simply go to SuckleBusters.com or just click the link in the show notes. Okay, that's enough of me, Gavin. Let's go ahead and get to the cooking tip of the week here on the Firecast Podcast. And now, the foodie tip of the week. My tip this time out is a baking tip. And I found that you get the best results when you leave the butter and the eggs out overnight and let them get the room temperature. Very simple, very effective, and as you know, baking, there's a lot of science behind it. And then one deviation in the amount of the ingredients you put in there, or even the temperature of something, could drastically affect the outcome of the food. So try leaving the butter and eggs out, and the things that you bake with them will come out much, much better. And now, here is Ken's Fiery World. Hello, Ken, and Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to you, Scott. I hope you've had a great holiday and a wonderful Christmas and enjoyed some spicy life. Oh, lots and lots of it. I think I've eaten way too much. It started, oh gosh, probably the beginning of December and I've gained, I don't know how many pounds, but we won't talk about that, will we? Oh, uh, you'll get them <laughs> off in a hurry. You know, I know. I, I have a day where I'll, you know, I'll play, uh, I try to eat healthy most of the time, but boy, this season I've had a lot of temptation. So I'm, I've given it a little bit. I have to tighten it up now. Exactly. Well, anyway, uh, the last episode I gave my picks for the top products of the year. This time out in your Kins Fiery World segment, it's your turn. What did you think was the best of 2014? Holy cow, Scott, you talk about, I know we've talked about just the, the whole plethora of wonderful creations that come out of our, our industry every year. And it's really hard when I look back at all of my notes at all of the wonderful sauces I tried at shows, I, I bought online or that were sent to me in products, whether it was a rub or a, a sweet or, or whatever it was, it's truly difficult to kind of narrow it down. But the list that I came up with is my top 10 products, uh, and I'm going to give one of them kind of the, the grand award, the flaming award, whatever. I haven't named them yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. You know, my, my fiery faves uh, for 2014, I kind of brought it down to 10 products, pretty diverse. Um, unlike you, it's not really by a specific category like you do. At, at some point, um, if I ever mature, um, I may get to that. But uh, it does kind of break down when I look at them into some segments. And so I kind of batch them out. I've got some dry products I really liked a lot. I've got the, um, a sweet product that I really liked a lot. 
that I'm not sure if it was brand new in 2014, but it was to me when I was introduced to it. And so I, you know, I loved it. Um, and then I've got a couple that are kind of a fruit, the Asian base, and then a couple of more traditional sauces um, and a super hot, um, uh, you know, made with a super hot. So uh, I think that um, I'm going to start with my dry ones first. All right. Well, it's good cracking. I- I'm eager to hear what these are. All right. And number one, and this is the first product uh, along the way and not the number one product. Like I said, these are not in rank order is from my buddy Tim Bader. Uh, at Volcanic Peppers uh, and in Omaha, Nebraska. And this is saying a lot for a South Louisiana boy, but this is Tim's Volcano Dust Cajun Spice Blend. Uh-huh. So I'm in the land of Tony Sacheries and Slap Your Mama and all these other pretty well-known Cajun spices, Zatarans. And Tim turned me on to this this year. And I just got to tell you, I am in love with this spice blend. It is pretty simple, pretty Cajun. You know, he's got the Cajun thing. It's, you know, his blend of spices was salt, garlic, onion, and cayenne. But it's got a really nice grind, so it blends well in dishes. Um, I put it on almost everything that I eat. It is just a, a wonderful, general, all-purpose Cajun spice blend. So that's um, Volcanic Peppers, Volcano Dust, Cajun Spice Blend. Volcano uh, Dust, Cajun Spice Blend. All right. Cajun Spice Blend, the first dry product. Second dry product is going to, it comes from my buddy Jim Duffy over in San Diego at Refining Fire Chilies. And I, I should have, I'm, I'm remiss in seeing if Jim has got this available commercially yet, but he sent me a sample pack of this and it is his Sriracha powder. Uh huh. So it is crazy. I've not seen a dry Sriracha product and Jim has captured the flavor of Sriracha and a dry powder that is wonderful. I travel with this. Um, I carry this. It goes a lot on, you know, I'll mix it. I love sriracha with ketchup. Um, that's kind of my thing. I'll do sriracha by itself. I love it in, in a bowl of pho, Vietnamese. But this is an easy travel companion for me. It's an easy table companion, especially when I don't have sriracha sauce. Very smart, very unique. Haven't seen it before. So if Jim does not have this commercially available, he should. So a shout out to Jim Duffy and Refining Fires Chili for his sriracha powder. Interesting. Real quick, I've not had this by itself. Does it have that kind of really deep, rich, sweet chili pepper flavor with garlic mixed? Is that the core base? It does. It. I'm, I'm telling you, Scott, if you if you put this on your tongue with your eyes closed, or if you could make it into a paste consistency, you'd think you were eating sriracha. Oh, huh, interesting. It, it truly. It, it's it's very it, it's very very good. Um, and really unique. And I just really applaud Jim. And however he came up with this, man, this stuff is dynamite. Excellent. So that may be a tease. And and I probably should have qualified because it, you know, probably should be products that are commercially available to folks. And this very well may be. And and my apologies to Mr. Duffy and Refining Fires and, and to our audience. Um, if I just teased them with something they can't get commercially yet, but that's, that's also a line to Jim to brother. It's time because this stuff's the bomb. Yeah, maybe if he doesn't have it commercially available right now, it will kind of kick his butt into having it available early this coming year. I'm thinking so. I'm thinking so. <laughs> All right. Last in the dry category. And I got to, I'd got heard a lot about this and seen it on the boards, um, Chili Heads and Fire Talkers and Eat More Heat and some of the others. A lot about this product, um, people bragging about it. Finally got a chance to experience this product in July at the Louisiana show in Lafayette. And this is Jim O'Brien's Crazy Good Green Chili Dust. Oh, yeah. Very familiar with it. I use it quite a bit. Oh. Holy cow, man. This is just an absolute home run. You know, Jim, you know, he blends those New Mexican Big Jim Hatch Green Chili Peppers, uh, some sea salt, and his spice blend. The grind is fine. Uh, it, it is just, it, it's a wonderful Southwestern flavor enhancer. Uh, it is just an outstanding product outstanding product and that's crazy good green chili dust uh you know i'm sitting here looking at looking at it going you're holding flavor in your hand and he's right green chili dust a mix of new mexican green chili powder garlic onion and sea salt and to make anything taste better and everything that i've used this with whether i've I've just i put it on popcorn i've put it on veggies that i've microwaved i've put it 
Um, I made some I made some burgers and with this, you know, and mix this with the meat and mm-hmm. then with a good verde sauce on top with the burger, green chili burger. Golly bum. Outstanding product. Outstanding product. Crazy good green chili dust from Jim O'Brien's crazy good sauces out of um he's it says Hernando, Mississippi, but I know he's out of the Memphis area. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. The stellar product he has there. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh my my sole top product in the sweet category uh has gotta go to Madison Chocolatiers West, who won, I believe, best of category for this in division at the Louisiana show at the World Hot Sauce Awards in July for their Gateway to Hell. Now, have you had this have you had this this sauce, Scott? Uh, which sauce is that? The Gateway to Hell for Oh Mad- the Gateway to Hell, yes, yes. Yes, Madison mm-hmm. Chocolatiers West. It is just it's caramel chocolate. It's it's tangerines. It is a wonderful, wonderful product. It's got a little bit of Reaper in it. Um, so it's got some heat, tangerine oil, some vanilla uh, just a wonderful caramel sauce. It is great. You know, I'm a huge fan of their Not Your Grandma's Caramel Sauce, which is a chocolate caramel um, ghost sauce. That is my, probably that and their Sweet Burn Butter Toffee are my favorite sweet products on the planet. But for a new product uh, and new for me for 2014, and it was this gateway to hell. Um, Ricky and Renee have relocated from New Jersey to Rock Hill. Um, I think they're working a little more closely with Ed curry at pucker butt but they continue to do a lot of outsourcing and a lot of other projects for um, other companies where you get their product but with somebody else's name but their stuff alone you know and and stay tuned they've got some new stuff coming out but gateway to hell madison chocolatiers west um, is a wonderful wonderful sauce with if you like that kind of a tangerine caramel reaper um, a little bit of citrus sweet heat it's a great sauce great sauce it's addictive. Yes, it truly. I, can, I mean, I can sit there and just eat it by the spoonful. And yes, it's gone. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's move into. I've got two. Uh, well, I, one that really is an Asian sauce, and then one that kind of, to me, is versatile, but it kind of lend itself to some Asian dishes that I use it with, um, but I like it a lot. The first one is K. John's Tribute to Buddha, um, the Al Buddha chili sauce, sweet chili sauce, and it comes in a mild and a hot, uh, and this is, I love a, a chili sauce anyway, a sweet chili sauce, and I think K. John, you know, he's just a master at flavor anyway, and this was a home run, and this is a great, great sauce. I use the mild a lot, and stir fry, um, I, you know, I've, I've had the hot and I've got the hot, but I've rebought the mild because I can layer my own heat in using powders or whatever I want and get the, the level of heat I want. But I want the flavor that this sauce brings. You know, it's it's your typical red chilies, sugar, lime juice, some cayenne. It's a fun, especially if you know Buddha, if you're in the industry, uh, Buddha's a character. He puts a little Buddha head on the bottles. It's got a great label, great look, great flavor. So Al um, K. John's Flavor and Fire, Al Buddha, sweet chili sauce, mild or hot, either one. But for me, I, I love the mild, um, love the mild. That's one I have not tried yet. I'm very eager to do that because Buddha himself had put that in his top of the year list, too. That's exactly right. He did. As well, he should. It's his namesake sauce. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and um, if and it's worthy. It, it truly is worthy, Scott. You need to get you some. Uh, it's great. The second one is uh, from a company that's near and dear to your heart in this year's top picks from Born to Hula. And this is Ed and Amy's Smokin' Pineapple. Oh, yeah. yeah. That I'm going to tell you, man, for a fruit-based sauce, smoke, the smoke with the pineapple, with the chipotle peppers and the, and the onion, the lime with it, it's just the fresh pineapple. This is a wonderfully fresh sauce. You can stir it lots of different ways. You know, I've steered it to more traditional things. I've steered it to mix it with some tomato uh, based products with some sauces uh, with an Asian. I mixed it. I think we talked about some of the things we could do for gift baskets uh, and how I made a stir fry. I, you know, put a picture up on my page of this product being in a stir fry with an Asian dish. So I kind of lump it in that more fruit based kind of category. But Born to Hula, 
Love Ed and Amy's stuff. That you know, just really smart. He came out with the. I think your top product of the year was his Reaper of Sorrow that he mm-hmm. sent me. Outstanding sauce as well. But for this genre of fruit uh, sauce, love this smoking pineapple, and it comes in an eight ounce bottle. Uh, so you get more for your money. He introduced this to me at the New York show back in March, and this is a rebuy sauce for me. Um, and that's a mark of a of a stellar sauce is when you know I do rebuys. Born to Hula, smoking pineapple, good stuff. And yeah, it is good stuff. Moving on to another fruit sauce that's new out and introduced this year um, are my friends Jeremy and Cat Walsh with Big Fats in his Double Dark. Um, I think that was one of Buddha's picks as well this year. And the black cherry and sage, not big. Have you noticed most of these that I'm picking are not big on heat, but they're big, big on flavor. This is the black cherry and the sage, the habanero. Um, he uses it's actually a chocolate hab in this. You know, the Corey just, oh man, it's just, their sauces are so intelligent. Very low sodium for that, those folks that are <clears throat> needing, excuse me, to pay attention to that. Big fats, double dark, black cherry and sage. I mixed it, you know, with, use it with steak. Uh, mixed it with steak sauce, used it instead of steak sauce. I actually mixed this with a couple of other sauces, which I do pretty frequently. Um, I made a salad dressing out of it. It has worked in all of those applications. Um, have not tried it on fish. Easy, easy on chicken. You know, the breakfast thing, the egg thing, that's usually, that's a pretty standard thing for hot sauce, was not my favorite application, but it didn't matter. There's so many wonderful applications of this sauce that it's just a stellar product. I think they've come out with some other really good ones um, in the past year that are good, and he's kind of getting away from that numbered 108, 208 to 808 sauce line and coming up with some specialty flavor blend sauces, uh, and I can't wait to see what's next out. So Big Fats, Double Dark, Black Cherry and Sage Hot Sauce is my other pick for a fruit-based hot sauce. Another excellent pick there. Oh, yeah. See, going into more what I consider, uh, you know, your traditional hot sauces, not the not the red Louisiana-style sauces, but what we think of more standardly is um, Scotty O'Hotty out of Detroit, Michigan, and his beer bacon chipotle. Again, Scotty, uh, met Scotty at the New York show. Uh, try, got some of his beer bacon chipotle sauce. Outstanding product. Um, he also made his whole line of pepper sauces is really smart. This guy's got a real, if he, you know, if he keeps plugging, working, you know, generates enough sales to cash flow himself, he really, I think he truly has a, a future in the industry. Um, because his flavor profiles are just stellar. Tomatoes, beer, Vidalia onions, roasted bell peppers, vinegar, tomato, chipotle, poblano, red apples, roasted jalapeno, Hungarian pepper. So you can see horseradish, national, it's a bacon flavored sauce. It's not, you know, a little bit of beer. So you mix all of those flavor profiles together in a hot sauce, and man, this is just a great all-purpose sauce. Um, put it on anything, mix it on anything. It's it's wonderful. So Scotty O'Hotty, one of the newer names out there in the last year or so, uh, out of Detroit, Michigan, and his beer bacon chipotle. But I think you can try just about any of his products and be pleased. But for me, that was um, that was a home run product for me this year. That is another one I have not tried yet. Uh, in the works, speaking with Scotty and Susie Owens yeah. to get some of that soon and maybe even have them on the podcast. Well, yeah, you know, Susie, bless her heart, just out of clear blue sky, says, hey, Ken, I want to, you know, I want to bless you with some sauces. And I told her that, you know, hey, Susie, that, you know, uh, as you know, my day job's kind of kicked me to where I haven't had time to write. But I said, Susie, I just don't know if I can get around to reviewing it. She said, that's okay. You know, I want you to try. I want you to let me know what you think. Um, and so she sent me uh, several of their, their products and just, man, just blew me away, blew me away. But this one, you know, this one I, lo- I just dearly loved. Along with this next one, which um, shouldn't come as any surprise, it's another K. John's product, Cara Cara or Cara Cara, however you'd like to pronounce that, maybe from wherever part of the country you are. And this is the milder version of this. And this is the cayenne, chili peppers, cayenne pepper, a great, another kind of a southwestern bent to me on a sauce. Really, really stellar. You know, the, his Oaxacan sauce is in my top five all-time favorite sauces. 
um, along with his bourbon infused chipotle, his hab sauce mm-hmm. that is my go to steak sauce. That's what I use for steak sauce most of the time, and his Oaxacan. But this one is, you know, this one could give his Oaxacan with me a run for its money. It's that good. It's got some ancho. It's got. You know, the, the cumin is a nice, light undertone. Uh, it doesn't overpower, but it tells you, hey, I'm here and I'm a Southwest thing going on uh, and a force to be reckoned with. Uh, so Cajon's um, Fiery Foods out of Westerville, Ohio, uh, with his Cara Cara um, hot sauce. Cara Cara. And I apologize to John if I'm not saying that correctly. I, I think it is Cara Cara, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was, but then Car Car came in and it's like, potato, potato, I don't know. <laughs> um, so Cara Cara. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those instances where it doesn't sound ethnic or exotic. It just cara cara. Cara cara, you know, and I care that you know I represent that I represent all these makers' products correctly. So, yes. John, my apologies in advance if I am not pronouncing that correctly, but um, it doesn't matter. C a r a c a r a, go buy it. it. It's good, and what I got with it, it was like Oaxacan with like a little bit of a lime flavor. You know, you're right. And maybe that's what one of the reasons I like it so much is because I am such a huge fan. Uh, the Oaxacan is, is a stock item. You know, I, I probably have a dozen stock items mm-hmm. on the shelf that are go to that if I run out, I, I quiver in a corner until I have some more. Um, <laughs> the, his Oaxacan is one of those, but that's an older product, so I didn't rate it for, for this year. But this sauce is going to be in that same lineup. Because I, I, you know, as long as he keeps making it, and yeah. I, you know, his he makes, I think he makes a hotter version of that sauce as well. Scott, are you? Do you know of the character? Of the character. Of the, I know he does with the Oaxacan. He makes a ghost. He's got a whole line of the Oaxacans now, and they're all good. I like the original the best, but they're all good. But this Kara Kara is right there. And it just puts a little different twist to that flavor profile set that, that it's smart enough to set it apart. Yeah, I, I'm only familiar with the one version of it. Okay. Well, and that may be all that's out there now. Maybe, you know, having hallucinations um, from hot sauce. Who knows? But then, and then lastly in the hot is my su- kind of the super hot category. Uh, another, like I said, uh, Reaper. Um, the Gateway to Hell and Sweet had a little bit of Reaper in it. But Tom Slosser's, Tom's Royd Rippin' Sauce, his Crimson Reaper is just an outstanding Reaper-based sauce. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with, with Tom's sauces already, you know, the novelty-sounding name belies the gourmet quality of his products. His roasted red pepper, gosh, his tapestry sauce, yes. they're all just masterpiece sauces to me. And this one is right up there. I mean, you know, we talked about, I know in yours, your, your product of the year was Ed Namey's Reaper of Sorrow, which is a stellar sauce, along with Steve Seabury's. I'll give them the, the honorable mentions. His Fufu Mama Chew got a five fiery whirl for me earlier this year, which is a, an incredibly rare feat. Um, you know, to get set, to get all fives, but this sauce is right there. I mean, this was probably from the super hot of 2014. The sauce for me. The only thing that you know, the only thing is sometimes Tom's sauces are a little clumpy, a little chunky. He doesn't blend them as smooth, but I think that's purposeful on his part. He has fresh product in his sauces, so that shouldn't be a. That's not really a takeaway. That's just more of a texture thing for me. But he's got he's got jalokias, he's got reapers, he's got red habs. But he put mango and peaches and tomato and oh gosh, it's just exquisite, an exquisite sauce um, that'll just rip your mouth a new one because it's hot and fan, just fantastic tasting. Another just highly underrated hot sauce brand, Tom's Royd Ribbon Hot Sauce. Agreed. I, I truly, truly think that. Um, that, that Tom's is, and, and I don't know if it's the, the sauce name, the company name lends itself. People don't take it as seriously. They take it more of a novelty based sauce company, but you know, so Tom might want to think about a more, you know, kind of a gourmet line name, but I got to tell you, man, home run. Home run, home run sauce. But in all of these and all the products coming down to what was the, you know, what was the number one find for me this year that made me go, holy ma jolie, this stuff is brilliance um, in a bottle or a jar. And that's the drum roll, please. Okay, I will put one in here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, is Jim O'Brien's crazy good green chili dust. Gotta tell you. This product just bowled me over with the simplicity, but at the same, you know, it's the oxymoron. It's simplistically complex. 
you know, it is a table powder. Um, it is a spice additive. It's a green chili powder, like lots of other powders that are out there. But his recipe and ratios and blends of his ingredients in this is just makes you go wow, and just you just your your tongue can't stop smiling. For me, that was the number one of all of them. Um, of all 10 of these, and I loved them all, and there were so many other honorable mentions, and we could go on and on and on, um, but that's the short list for me for 2014. Great list. Great list. I've had most of them. I agree with you. They're just fantastic. Yeah, and, and the couple that you haven't had, man, you need to get you some, and and, and we'll, maybe we'll trade, off, we'll trade off new sauces maybe an episode coming up. That sounds good. Well, of course, uh, everybody listening to this episode, episode 71, will have links to all of those sauces in the show notes. So it'd be really, really easy for everybody just to jump on all those websites and check them out for yourselves. Sounds great. And I encourage everybody as we, uh, you know, Scott, you and I and um, our our fellow uh, Chili Head community, promote that small batch sauce and spicy food maker um, go to the farmers markets. Go online. It's it's worth it. I know people say, but the shipping, whatever. It's it's worth it for one supporting entrepreneurial small business owners, supporting people that have a passion for what they do and a passion for flavor and a passion for spice. You know, if you ever have an opportunity to go to a show or and see a lot of these guys working together, it's one of the few industries and few settings in my long history in business. And others where, you know, people, they are there truly to help each other be successful. Um, and that's a rare thing, Scott. And that's something that, that I feel I've developed a passion for is to promote our industry, promote these folks that work so hard to, to chase a dream and live that dream and give us something to make our belly smile in the process. There we go. Beautifully said. And it's all because we all know, ladies and gentlemen, it is a fiery world. All right. Thank you very much, Ken. All right, Scott. Take care, buddy. See you next time. Thank you very much, Ken. And the links for all those companies that Ken had mentioned will be available in the show notes for episode 72 of the Firecast, which you can find at thefirecast.com or scottrobertsweb.com. Some fantastic companies he picked. And again, as I said in the preamble, I trust Ken's judgment greatly. I've tried most of those products. Top-notch stuff all the way. So good stuff for his best for the year 2014. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take a little break. When we come back, I'm going to be speaking with Ed and Amy Buckholtz of Bornahula Hot Sauce. So, stick around. Looking for a straightforward user interface on a cost-effective, feature-filled, multi-track recording software? Call off the search! Mixcraft from Acoustica has exactly what you're looking for. It's time to include reliable audio creation and editing software with real punch into your projects. Check out Mixcraft now over at Acoustica.com forward slash Mixcraft and start a new generation of audio creation and editing today. Suckle Busters is the best in Texas barbecue rubs and sauces. Owner Dan Arnold knows his stuff, and Suckle Busters products have proven it by winning hundreds of awards, including a pair of back-to-back first-place sauce wins at the American Royal. Their Texas gunpowder seasoning is a staple around the Roberts household, and I cannot wait to try some of their brand new offerings for 2015, including their Wild Thang Wild Game Rub and their competition honey glaze and finishing sauce. Oh yeah! You yourself can check out Suckle Busters now at over 300 retail locations or by going to SuckleBusters.com and find out why Suckle Busters is busting with flavor. This is Paul's Tree Service. A person is calling through Relay, Missouri. This is operator. Yeah, but we're not interested. Who is that? Uh, just one of those annoying telemarketers. Wrong. You just hung up on a customer. One who wanted to spend money with your business. A customer who happens to be deaf, hard of hearing, or who has a speech disability. Calling you through Relay Missouri. Relay Missouri is a free service that allows people who are deaf, hard of hearing, or who have a speech disability to communicate over the telephone with you and your business. 
Don't hang up. This could be new business. For more information on Relay Missouri, take a minute to log on to RelayMissouri.com and open the door to a whole new group of customers. Become part of a growing community that is silent but can speak volumes for your business. Relay Missouri brings the hearing and deaf, hard of hearing, and people with speech disabilities together at no charge with no sign-up and no monthly fee. Log on to RelayMissouri.com and find out how you can start communicating with these new customers today. Hi, this is Arthur or Gary from MajorLeagueGrilling.com, and you're listening to the Firecast with Scott Roberts. Wouldn't it be cool if advertising for your food, barbecue-related, or hot sauce-related company could last forever? It can with podcast advertising. Here's how it works. Unlike TV or radio ads where every instance the ads are broadcast or played only once and lost forever, podcasting advertising, on the other hand, can have repeat exposure and replayability for weeks, months, and even years after they're inserted in the Firecast podcast. So, even if a podcast episode is a few months or years old, your ads will still be impactful to repeat listeners, as well as new listeners who download and listen to the show. This, combined with the fact that each episode of the Firecast averages over 12,000 listeners per episode of a highly targeted audience, gives your advertising dollar the most bang for the buck. Find out more about podcast advertising sponsorship opportunities by visiting thefirecast.com forward slash advertising. All right, we're back. And now here is an exclusive interview with the makers of what I thought was the best product of 2014, Ed and Amy Buckholz of Born to Hula. Enjoy. And now the Fire Talkers interview. Good evening, Ed and Amy. How are things out in New Jersey? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Glad to finally have you on the show. I know we've been for a couple months here just kind of bouncing back and forth and just really never setting up a time and a date to call. So I'm really pleased to to finally have you on the show here. So you have Born the Hula. Now, as I ask a lot of people, what is your company all about? And if you were able to give me a 30-second elevator pitch, what would that be? We're a a small batch, all-natural hot sauce company from Highlands, New Jersey. We have currently six award-winning flavors from mild to wild. Basically, we were trying originally when when Ed first got started, we were really just trying to find things that people that weren't introduced to spicy food, you know, we wanted to try and find a way to get them excited about it, trying, you know, A, trying different things and B, trying – Um, some things that added a little spice and flavor to your food. So that was kind of our original goal. And we started originally with the cayenne and then the two habaneros, which were mild and medium. You know, we've just been kind of carrying it, carrying it down the line. Yeah, I mean, also it was, I didn't know much about the industry. And, but what I did know is everything was extremely hot and blowing you up and everything like that. So I wanted to make something my mother could eat. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> basically. And for people that really didn't like serious heat and just wanted something, just be a little bit easier on them. So we kept it to more of the mild and more more of the flavor side of the sauces. So what was the original sauce that you come up with? Was it the cayenne to begin with? I mean, the very, very first sauce. Or was it the three, the cayenne and the two habanero ones you mentioned? They all kind of came together at the same time, but the cayenne was the was the first one that we were trying to make because we were so – the thing that happened was everywhere I used to go to eat, everything was Tabasco, mm-hmm. and then later on it became, you know, Frank's. So I was just so sick of being force-fed these two hot sauces <laughs> that I wanted to make my own. Mm-hmm. So they actually – when we started playing around with trying to make them, we did make the three at the same time, but the cayenne was the main focus. But they all just happened. So that's why we kind of call them the three original three or three yeah. originals. The three amigos or something like that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Were you like a spicy foods fan? Did you just experiment with peppers? Now, your two habanero ones, the ancho and the guajillo, use peppers that aren't really used a whole lot in mainstream hot sauces. Now, how did you? How did the idea get hatched in your head to kind of use those? 
Oh, this is what happened. Like to make it a little shorter. Um, I've always been a hot sauce fan. I didn't follow it. It wasn't like a hobby or anything like that. I used to like see the bottles, you know, and get crack up at them and everything like that. And actually, where we live is where Blair's is from. Mm-hmm. And on Sundays, we used to go to the bar where he worked at. So I used to see all his sauces on display and everything like that. And you know, that was a long time ago. Yeah make this sure even store just where these sauces came from when i decided to start a hot sauce company i had googled information about how to make hot sauce and i came across a hot sauce starter kit yeah and it was like 29 20 dollars or something 19.99 and it gave you three five ounce woozy bottles the caps the shrink wraps a funnel and some pepper mash and chilies so two of the chilies one was a wahilo and one was an ancho and so that was how it, why I started using them, playing around with them in the mashes. Oh, interesting. I wouldn't think that peppers like that would be part of something like that. I figure it would just be kind of the basics. Uh, yeah, I, I have seen a lot of those do-it-yourself hot sauce kits. I've tried one before. And, you know, other hot sauce makers, they have kind of started off the same way, whether or not they really want to admit it. They've kind of told me, oh, yeah, this is how I started, Scott. It, it, it sounds like you have really, I guess, less than romantic beginnings. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> they want people to think that they, oh, started, you know, as a kid, and they have a love of the culinary arts and all that kind of stuff. Well, people just kind of experiment, and they kind of get thrust into this, and I guess you guys kind of did the same way, too. Do you have any particular type of culinary background? I mean, were you uh, a cook or anything like that before you created these hot sauces? Yeah, I, I graduated from a New York restaurant school in Manhattan, okay. and so I have a culinary skills degree, I guess you could say. Yep. I interned in a restaurant in New York City called Gabriel's, which was yeah, a three-star Lincoln, restaurant Lincoln Center. in Lincoln Center, and I, I worked in a couple bars and stuff like that, doing you know shorter cooks, and but I really wasn't into it too much, and it was funny, not to make a longer story, but I did work in this one bar restaurant and they would have me make the Super Bowl or Super Bowl or whatever Sunday football Sunday wings. wings or put out a buffet every Sunday. So I was making like these crazy dishes for these guys <laughs> and they just wanted hot wings. Mm-hmm. So it really didn't work out but I was doing, you know, the short hour cooking and all that and but I was really getting into catering and it just so happened this place that I worked at had this humongous kitchen that really there was nobody in it half the time. And there was another cook there that worked on, you know, the other days mm-hmm. and she was interested in starting a catering business. So we started talking. It was actually at the Christmas party and we were saying we were going to start a, a little catering business. And I was like, great, this is what I'm more interested in because I really didn't want to work every Friday, Saturday and every holiday, you know, in the kitchen for 13 hours. Yeah. So I figured this might be a better way to, to do things. And so we talked a little bit of that night, and then the next night was Christmas night, and I was off, and the restaurant burnt down to the ground. Mm. <laughs> so one of the last things that they found was my, col- my culinary knife there, luckily, <laughs> and the thing still smelled like smoke the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so they were trying to say that it was me that burnt down the restaurant, but oh I was not there. They, I just left my knife there from the night before. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys have a unique name, Born to Hula. Where did you come up with that? Um, Born to Hula is actually a song by band Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, okay, okay, um, okay. You know, I don't know why I didn't make that connection. <laughs> Not many people do. Once in a while when someone does, I usually give them a free bottle of sauce or a t-shirt. <laughs> so I love the name, and we were going for the, like, Hawaiian girl theme with cause to go with the name. And then doing more research, I saw that there's, you know, Hula Girl hot sauce. So that really threw a wrench in the spokes. And I was like, you know what? We can't call it something with Hula and have the girl. And it'd be, it's too much the same. So we kind of were giving up on the idea. And I was, same time, was looking for if I had any recipes from culinary school or something that I could make or either hot sauce or barbecue sauce recipes. And when I looked in this bin that I had in the, my friend's basement, all my recipes, all my books, everything was destroyed from water damage. So the only thing that was left was a picture of my father uh, doing the hula hoop. 
that and my uh, book I called the Bi- the Chicken Bible. It had a uh, 365 ways of cooking chicken. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it was a picture of him doing a hula hoop in the Chicken Bible, and I was like, wow. So I'm like, maybe we should keep it, you know, instead of uh, Hawaiian hula hula hoop. So it's kind of like a combination, but it was also at that time that Ed had lost his job in manufacturing and had really just started. You know, he started with the hot sauce kit and was really kind of just. It was kind of like a fork in the road for him. So when he got up that day to go downstairs to look for all of his recipes and notebooks and all of his ideas from all of his previous cooking and found it ruined, it was almost like that picture of his father was perfectly stuck in between the pages of the book, and it and it was fine. It was totally fine, and it was almost like his dad was looking down on him saying, nope, this is exactly what you need to be doing, but you don't need any of this. Just do it. So it was like that little bit of inspiration, you know, that he got from finding that picture. And going backwards a little bit, his dad had taken him, like, as, as when he was young, like, into Chinatown, and they bought a walk, and let's go cook, let's go learn how to cook, let's, you know, try something new, mm-hmm. you know, different recipes and stuff, and I think it was just like that little bit of little bit of inspiration from his dad, you know, to try new things. And that's kind of part of with the whole hot sauce thing, you know, for him and, you know, with the different chilies and stuff. Yeah. Well, and let's uh, go ahead and segue into the chilies and talk about each hot sauce individually. First, the cayenne. Was there any particular inspiration behind the formula that you had made, the recipe, or did it just kind of just come out through experimentation? The idea was basically I was taking everything that I like to eat, you know, and I liked vinegar. I liked garlic, obviously, cayenne pepper. And the one problem we had was the originally it was going to be roasted red bell peppers. And I kept trying and trying to ro- roasted red bell peppers, and it was not working. It mm-hmm. did not taste right. So the one day I said, well, I'm like, it's a pain in the butt to roast them all the time. Let's just try it regular. And it, it worked. Yeah. It really came pretty easy, to be honest with you, with that recipe. And we just wanted it to be simple and like, you read the bottle of tobacco of Tabasco at Frank's, and you just see three ingredients. So I was like, mm-hmm. "Well, there you go, three ingredients." And I tend to agree. You know, it's very simple, and yeah, it does kind of have that really Louisiana style hot sauce base. But you guys just improved it. Thank you. And no offense to the fans of those other types of sauces, but you guys just made it a little bit better, in my opinion. Thank so, you. And then we go on to the habanero ancho. <laughs> well, like I said, that was the ancho we got introduced in the starter kit. So that's when we started playing around with that. We like took the same recipe as the cayenne, you know, and I said, well, let me add the ancho, ancho, however you say. I'm from New Jersey, so I say everything. <laughs> oh, that, that's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> so basically kind of added it to like the cayenne recipe and found out that if I add this chili, it made a whole different sauce. And then I added other flavors that I like, like cumin and um, what else do I have in this thing? Garlic, a little bit of red bells. Oh, and and the lime juice. Oh, the lime juice. It was just like slight changes, and it just made another sauce. And that's what I meant in the beginning, how all three of them came together at the same time. Because I just changed the chili and some of the ingredients. I ended up having three sauces, and I remember Amy coming over, and I was like, well, I have three of them now. Like, which one do we use? And she's like, use all of them. Bottle all of them. And I just thought that wasn't the right way to go at the time. And then we ended up bottling all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> or selling all and three the, of them. And yeah. the people that weren't, like, exposed to any spicy food really liked the cayenne because that was just a nice tangy zing. And then, you know, the ancho. Like, I remember we were go- we went out to dinner for a steak dinner, and, like, everyone was just pouring it on the steaks. They were like, this is delicious. And we were like, I mean, we might have something here. You know, this might be, you know, just really nice medium heat with the sweetness of the anchos and, you know, a little tanginess of the vinegar. It kind of all just came together. And then from there, we moved on to the guajillo, which is really the guajillo. It's the sister sauce to the ancho. So it's yeah. basically the same recipe, just swapped out those two chilies, and it just changed everything. Yeah. In my opinion, the guajillo has a little bit more of like a southwest flavor. Do you guys use yeah. a little bit more cumin than the other one? No, it's something with the chili or just if I tell you that all the ingredients are exactly the same, oh, they okay. are. <laughs> Everything's the same. It's just the, the chili and the way things come out tasting different. I mean, sometimes you taste more lime in that sauce. and 
it just it just comes out totally different. I the Guajillo is actually my favorite. I think it's very underestimated, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the word? We use it on average. It's funny. Day. Funny. The, a lot of people in the industry say they like that sauce, but it doesn't get a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, it's your favorite. It's your that. favorite. It's my by favorite. Far. It's it's what do I say? It's like the sun that uh, tries so hard and doesn't win. Like <laughs> <laughs> like studies and doesn't get an A. That's my Guajillo. It's your fave. I happen to love it. It's one of my favorites. I, probably out of the original four you guys had submitted me to review, whatever it was, three years ago, I think that got my highest rating. I got another fan over here. And then we move on to the Ghost of Ancho. Of course, use the uh, Buchilokia chilies a little bit. How did that one come about? Well, after starting to do a bunch of demos, and I don't think we did any trade shows yet. I think they were just like local demos in stores. You know, everyone was giving the old, it's not hot enough. I, I need more heat and blah, blah, blah. And we were trying to tell people, like, we're based our company on not being overly hot. And, you know, people didn't want to hear it. They just want, they want hot. I want hot, hot, hot. <laughs> So at the time, our ancho was just getting so big, or mm-hmm. you could say, and everyone was just liking it. And I was like, well, what if I take that recipe and add smoked ghost peppers? I don't even know how I got my hands on the smoked ghost peppers. Somehow I got it. And I was like, I just added a little smoked ghost peppers and whammo. <laughs> there it was. That's our best seller today. It's our biggest award winner and our best seller. Oh, yeah, a big award winner, and I think it was the Fiery Food Challenge. Or was it was it Best of Show? Yeah, or is it, yeah. Was yeah. It, um, it won the Golden Chili, and then it the Golden Chili, yeah. won Best Hot Sauce, yeah. and then it won uh, Best Overall. Yeah. I believe it was 750 entries, mm-hmm. or countries or entries. I don't know entries, I, I think. Entries. Yeah, that sounds more like it. I don't think there are 700 countries in the world. <laughs> so... <laughs> Countries, countries. Countries. I meant oh, company. Oh, okay, okay. No, I, I kid with you. <laughs> and then yeah. you'd made Devin Almond's Chipotle Blues. Now, someone from the St. Louis area, you had gotten together somehow with Devin Almond, who's, of course, the son of Dwayne Almond, and he had played for a while in the St. Louis area. Uh, how did you come in contact with him and create a sauce for him? It's actually Greg Almond's son. Oh, I'm sorry. What did I say? Said okay, Dwayne. Dwayne. I'm that's okay. Something. Greg Allman. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. We were introduced to him by a, a mutual friend. Um, we have a friend who's she sells uh, Fuchs amps, and th- that's the amps that um, Devin uses. She was telling us that one day she was meeting with him, and they it's were meeting over breakfast, I think. And he was putting Tabasco on his eggs, and she said, "There's nothing wrong with Tabasco, but you need to try some real hot sauce." And she basically introduced us and he was like well that's kind of funny he said because i need to meet them because i want to make a sauce he's like i've got a barbecue recipe a hot sauce you know i want to i want to i want to get this cracking well he didn't have a recipe he he has a, ideas family yeah, recipes he had a, and, a steak sauce that he was interested in he still hasn't shown me the recipe but <laughs> he said it's been in his family for years yeah basically i had asked her too and i said well if you know any bands you know i'd like to make a, a sauce for somebody and then that's how this whole story came up and he ended up calling us on the week before fourth of july we, he came down to the beach here we went out to lunch with him and i gave him a bunch of our sauces he tried them all and he really wanted to do something with us i mean i came up with i wanted to do something i like smoky flavor so i just came up with a recipe which again came pretty easy for some reason and i just kept bouncing ideas off of him and he loved everything and that was it yeah and there you go and there and there you go lover of all things yeah he loves a lot of foods and you know he travels the world and everything so he liked the way uh we used the vinegar and he liked the smokiness and it just worked out. Yeah. And then you had created the smoking pineapple sauce. Uh, one I happen to particularly love. I love sweet and heat. Uh, where'd you get the idea for that? Um, the smoking pineapple came from what we were doing was uh, some demos we, we were doing. We would take uh, grilled pineapple, fresh sliced grilled pineapple, and we were adding chipotle blues to it. And it was tasted amazing. I'm like, how do I figure this out? And you're like, how do I make this sauce? So basically took the Devin Allman recipe and added fresh pineapple to it. No. 
And there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go again. That sauce, is, it changed throughout the year. It kind of, yeah, kind of. We weren't really sure from the get-go. Like, if the reason why we put it in a larger bottle is because in a bigger woozy is because we were really using it a lot with cooking and using it as a marinade and just grilling with it. And, it, you know, it wasn't – obviously, we all know that people can cook with hot sauce. But a lot of people were – we were finding at demos and shows and stuff that people are coming up to our table and they're like, well, what do you do with it? Well, it's hot sauce. You put it on everything. You cook, you know, like all the things that we know what to do with it, but people weren't really getting it. And, you know, we're like, oh, you can marinate chicken. It's great on pork chops. It's great on any, you know, anything, seafood, you know, bake it, grill it, drizzle it, you well, know. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so funny because there's so much fresh pineapple in when I make this recipe and, People will come up and say, "I don't taste the pineapple." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm like, there's a quarter of a fresh pineapple in each bottle. <laughs> like, if I could see the whole pineapple in this bottle, like they would still say they don't taste it or it's not sweet enough." So we kind of tried to make it more, add more sweetness to it without adding. There's no sugars in it, so it's all just from fresh pineapple. Mm-hmm. We're having a hard time with that one. <laughs> It's, like, either you love it or you hate it. So it's somewhere in the middle. It's Ed's Achilles heel as far as, you know, all the, the ones that we have out right now because he hates making it. He, you know, it, it seems like a couple times a year he's like, I think I'm not going to make it anymore. And then we'll get a run on orders or we'll get like all this great, you can't stop making that. That's our favorite. <laughs> I'm kind of, we kind of just, just go back and forth with it. <laughs> just annoying but yet we use it you know on a daily on a weekly basis you know it always finds its way on on food in our house so so it's just one of those it's just it's really your achilles heel as far as your sauces go because you, you fight with it yeah yeah it happens with a lot of sauce makers they will create something it may be the i guess the one that's hardest for the customers to understand sales wise it may go all over the place and you don't know what to do with it and that's a big question. Should I drop it? Should I continue to make it? So I hope you guys do continue to make it. It's a fantastic sauce. Yeah, well, thank you. We call it too now. What is, what do we call this thing now? All purpose sauce. And we wanted to call it that because to bring more people in that. So when they came to our booth or table, wherever we're at, and said, you know, do you have anything other than hot sauce? And we say, oh, we have this all purpose sauce. It's like a great dipping sauce marinade. And they just look at you with a blank stare, like, what, what the hell are you talking about? You know, and then you'll get someone to say it's too spicy. And it's like, there's really no, there's less than black pepper in it. It's like, there's nothing in there. I don't know what the faith of the spoken pine is. <laughs> well, we will find out in the coming yeah, year, right. I guess. And then the most recent one you made, Reaper of Sorrow. Now, when I told you guys that I had some news for you, I wanted to get your initial reaction when I told you this. I had not told anyone else, but I am naming this Reaper of Sorrow my best overall product of 2014. Oh, my God! Awesome. Yeah, Yay. yeah. I'm gonna have my That's best of episode coming out in the next couple of days too. So I wanted to tell you guys that I was ho- I was hoping to get this interview set up to tell you guys beforehand so that's going to be coming out i just think it's just a great all-purpose sauce you can use it for everything why don't you guys tell me about how you came up with this idea for it this sauce has been going on for a while like the other sauces you know are pretty cut and dry for me to make and but this one i've been um, you've been laboring over yeah i've been throwing like around different versions of it I don't know what else to say about it. It was just, that's a hard one. Like, I had different, uh, like, we were making just pepper mashes and using different things. And it's like a combination of a lot of things that were going on, though. With this sauce, I've learned a lot more about the industry and co-packing. And to go back to another sauce we had with uh, the Surge of Sandy. That sauce we did with Cajon and Cajon Fiery Foods. So working with him, I really learned a lot about ingredients and making sauces. This was kind of a spinoff from there. Yeah, this was uh, – we did everything different than we did with any of the other, of our other sauces. Everything from the label to ingredients is the opposite. So it, far, it's been working. <laughs> yeah, and it was a big step because, you know, when you stray from what you're doing and what's working and what you're, what you're trying to build, you know, your brand does, it's a little scary. So that's kind of why I said we – like he labored over it, you know, going in this, in this route – 
but it, it was really something that you wanted to do because with the trends of, you know, these peppers really getting hotter and, and people asking for them, we really felt like we weren't going to be in the game if we didn't make something hot. And then for us, it was really just trying to balance flavor with heat because personally, like we don't really, you, you know, like we don't we heat. don't really eat the extreme heat on a regular basis. So we were really trying to find the balance of how can we use utilize this pepper and bring out you know the, the the beautiful flavors that the pepper has, but with still finding other ingredients to balance you know that heat. You know we went we went we did a lot of different tries with it and finally got it to the point where we were like all right i think i think we might be ready but still even so we were really um still really afraid because we were kind of going out on a limb being that it was totally different and it certainly is but it goes back to that i call it a born to hula simplicity it's nothing earth shatteringly different it still has a good basic flavor to it and it's just enough of sweetness and all-purposeness. I'm, I'm trying to think of words and how to describe it. But you could use it, in my opinion, for just about anything. Now, you kind of, uh, on the product label, the way you describe it, you also mention the word sriracha style. Now, all the variations of sriracha sauces out there, how much do they influence this, if at all? Uh, to me, it may be a little bit of a sriracha style, but it's certainly not a sriracha sauce. No, well, the, the reason why I said that is that the main ingredients in it is uh, fermented jalapeno peppers or mash, mm -hmm. and a sriracha basically is fermented red jalapeno peppers with fresh garlic and sugar. Yeah. So that was our main ingredients. So keeping up with uh, the trends of nowadays in sriracha, I figured – well, hell, I'm using these peppers and somewhat of this ingredients to sriracha. I might as well throw that in there. Yeah. Well, it, it certainly kind of works. I think people who are hardcore fans of sriracha may not find that it tasting exactly like what they're used to. Yeah, but it was hard to label. Like, I didn't want to label it as sriracha, and that was it. So that's why we just said a style. So it's, it's a, a style of sriracha. Well, you certainly hit upon a winning formula, and it's a great, great sauce. I love it. Congratulations on that. And kind of moving on from the individual products that you have to a little bit more about what you've encountered in the business. Uh, what do you think has been like the biggest hurdle that you face so far? It's perfect timing to talk about this because <laughs> we're just talking about the Reaper of Sorrow. When, also, when I was making this sauce, I was keeping in mind all our other sauces now we have finally come to a point where i can't make this you know every day myself and so we've been looking for co-packers and we've been having trouble finding a co-packer that can reproduce some of our flavors so when i was making the reaper of sorrow i was trying to make it as simple and co-packer friendly as possible so you know, i knew exactly this is basically the ingredients they kind of use and how they do it and i took all that into mind and working with Cage John and I knew this is how it would be done. This would be easy for them to make. This is a cheaper route to make a sauce and except for the, the Reaper peppers. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I knew the base of the sauce had to be cheaper. Simple. Yeah, because the Reapers were going to be so expensive yeah. to add. The hardest thing right now was finding the what we lucked out with the Reaper Sorrow because – we brought it right to Endorphin Farms, and Adam just knocked it right out of the park. I mean, I made it once or twice, and I sent it to him, and he sent me a sample, and it was delicious. So it was like it was done. We really lucked out. Yeah, so the, the plan worked as, as keeping it co-packer friendly. But that has been one of our biggest hurdles, even with, with our other sauces. You know, recipes were made, you know, they were made by me not knowing anything about the industry or how things are done or how – how things are made in bigger scale. Mm -hmm. So whenever when you take someone's recipe that's small scale and, and you build it up, it changes. And plus, they use all different ingredients. You got to keep your ingredients simple, like you know, uh, product wise. Like you don't just go use Heinz ketchup or something, and then you go to a co-packer and they're using Hunt's ketchup or something. There's a lot of different things that uh, that are involved. I think just you know? I think you know the whole co-packer thing, the growth because we can't really keep up with the growth, which is such an amazing problem to have but yeah. but still trying to I'm the keep only, it. probably the only person that gets pissed <laughs> off when i get an order 
just the talking about it, the hurdles of a small business that is having growth, but you know, you don't think of that as being a problem, but it is, you know, and, and going from Ed making it himself, you know, in the rent, you know, renting commercial kitchen space and doing it that way to then working with, you know, like Adam and Adorphin Farm. And it's just, you know, we, we learned a lot in the last year and a half in trying to, you know, be ready for the growth if it happened and now it's happening, you know, it's, it's challenging because obviously you don't want to put the, put the cart, uh, what's that saying? Put the cart before the horse or put the horse before the cart. I forget, but it's just been really, really challenging, you know, in that respect. And, you know, and we're so excited that we're growing, but at the same time, we still want to keep it tasting like small batch hot sauce. And the problem is like, if you, if you start out with a sauce that nobody has tried and didn't win any awards and no one knows about, then when you go to a co-packer and they have different changes to the sauce or things that don't turn out exactly the same, you could still sell it and say, hey, this is this is the way the sauce is going to taste. But we've been in business now four years and our ghost of Ancho won all of these awards and everyone knows what it tastes like. So I want it to taste exactly the way – I make it, you know, I don't want it to change, mm-hmm. you know, in quality ingredients and not using fresh garlic as opposed to, you know, minced garlic uh-huh. and powders and not that there's anything wrong with that because we use that too. But, you know, trying to really use as much of the fresh ingredients that we can. So our flavors kind of stay consistent. Where do you see Born Ahula in the next five or 10 years? <laughs> where, where would we like to see it? <laughs> yeah. I would definitely like to see it on, you know, more tables, more more kitchen tables in America, you know, more more stores, just helping people, you know, trying spicy food, trying, you know, getting more awareness for our industry and to not be afraid of, you know, to not be afraid to try new things as far as, you know, food and flavors go. Mm-hmm. I'm just hoping we're still in business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have a we have a lot of things in mind. There's I have like about a thousand sauces that just haven't released yet. <laughs> so and I have other ideas for other condiments and food. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things going on, and even another in the beginning when we were making Born to Hula, there was always the idea of I thought I was gonna first I thought that I didn't have to sell anything. I thought people were just gonna buy it. <laughs> I don't know how I thought that. <laughs> I thought, hey, I'll just put it on a website and people are going to buy it and I'm going to make thousands and, or hundreds or whatever. And <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> but um, the idea was to raise money to eventually buy a bar or uh, what I call a crab shack. And, you know, so like. The shack. The you know, shack. There we go. Well, it's boring to hulas and have girls on roller skates and bikinis and. <laughs> <laughs> palm stuff. trees and. That would be a great idea to have maybe a small chain of restaurants like that. Yeah, I mean, the name fits, Born to Hula. It sounds like a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, excellent. Uh, you guys have had a great start. It has a great overall stable of products. Uh, thank you very much for being on the podcast tonight. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to mention or promote or say before we get off the call tonight? Thank you for uh, supporting us these last four years and for just taking time out for us to uh, help spread spread the word about us. We are so excited <laughs> about your news. So we just couldn't, couldn't be more happy and couldn't be more grateful for your support. Oh, well, thank you guys. Where could people find you on the web? At borntohula.com. And you're on Facebook and Twitter and other social media outlets? We are on them yep. all. <laughs> yeah. Instagram, uh, Born to Hula 52. Twitter is at Born to Hula 52. I think it's more, I think it's just Born to Hula Hot Sauce on Facebook. Okay, okay. Well, I will go ahead and put up links in the show notes for this particular episode uh, so everybody could go find your stuff and follow you and like you and friend you and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Ed and Amy, thank you once again. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you, Scott. Uh, Thank you, Ed, and thank you, Amy, another great up-and-coming hot sauce company that you all should take notice of. And the link to their website again is borntohula.com. Ken Alexander's website is fieryworld.com. And, of course, as always, all the links mentioned in any 
Firecast podcast episode can be found in the show notes for that particular show. Just go to thefirecast.com or scottrobertsweb.com, look for that blog entry, and then click away at your convenience. Because I know a lot of you are listening in your car, when you're at the gym, when you're out and about, or at home doing housework and chores and gardening and what have you. It's hard to kind of get to those links, and that is one of the reasons why I provide all those for you. So you don't have to stop, write everything down, or stop what you're doing and click. So as long as we're talking about links, I want to go ahead and throw out some links for my blog and my social media outlets, whatever you want to call them. My main blog, my center on the web is scottrobertsweb.com. If you're on Facebook, you can like my page at facebook.com slash scottrobertsweb. My Twitter handle is scottroberts. My YouTube channel that you can subscribe to is youtube.com slash scottrobertsweb. And these two could be found over at the podcast site or over at my blog. So before I call this a day for this particular episode of the Firecast, I wanted to remind everybody to take the survey. And the link for that is scottrobertsweb.com slash survey. It'll take maybe about five minutes of your time, but it will help out greatly with knowing what you guys are all about, knowing more about you, what type of content, what type of things that you're into. So anyway, thanks for listening to this particular episode. God bless you all, and until next time, remember, keep it burning. Thanks for listening to The Firecast. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes or at the official website at thefirecast.com. Thanks again, and remember, keep it burning.